Hey, Eddie, you can go ahead and close that. You can close that door. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody here this morning as we come to worship the Lord. And I want to welcome everybody online as we come together to praise Jesus this day and be grateful for all that God is doing in our lives. The announcements are short this week. The committee on the 150th year next September, the church will be 150 years old of continuous service. And we just give the Lord praise for that and uh, give him all the honor. So that committee will be meeting downstairs um, immediately after the service. Nominating committee, all the recommendations are posted on the, in the vestibule and in the back. If you want to look at those, and it's also been sent out by email. Um, if you want a copy, we can give those with no problem at all. I want to welcome again everyone to come to worship the Lord today. Before we get started, I want to take a moment and just reflect on the Lord. Reflect on who God is and all that God is doing in our lives to get us prepared for what God has for us today as we come to worship the Lord. So if you would, take a moment. It's just going to be quiet and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come and prepare your heart today. Start your relationship today with a Fresh start, asking the Lord to touch you. And then in just a moment, I'll simply say amen, and we'll have our hearts all in tune together, all in one, one accord, as we go into worship. So you individually pray right where you're at um, to, to your Lord and Savior Jesus. Lord, I just want to say amen, amen, and amen. Let's come to worship. Nita, come lead us in our songs this morning as we prepare ourselves for worship. Good morning, church family. Good morning. morning. Today I'd like to be sharing some um, scripture excerpts from chapter Psalms 18, 29, 86. 138, 63, Matthews 12, Philippians 2, Nehemiah 9, Revelation 22, and 1 Timothy 6. Quite an array there. Ascribe, ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. For among the gods there is none like you, Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. We love you, O Lord. You are our strength. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. The nations will bring glory to your name and will put their hope in your name. For God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Please join our voices together in lifting up the name of Jesus. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise, for you alone are the Lord. You, Jesus, are the bright morning star. You are blessed and only sovereign. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. We behold your power and glory. We will praise you, Lord, with all of our hearts. We will sing your praise. We will praise your name. We will reign with Jesus throughout eternity. Let's offer our praises to King Jesus this morning.
Good morning. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can be in your house and worship you, for you are truly great and worthy to be praised. We thank you for your love and kindness that you've showed us throughout this week, and we look forward to your guidance and blessings and directions in the coming week. Uh, in this hour, we ask that uh, you would draw our hearts and minds close to you uh, so that everything we say and do during this hour will be pleasing in your sight. And now we lift up the prayer that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Would you join me now with the responsive reading found in your bulletin? It comes from 1 Peter and 2 Timothy. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. God, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I know whom I have, I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able, able to keep me that which I have committed to him until that day. Amen. 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 Thank you for God's holy word. Amen. As we come together, as we come together today to celebrate Jesus and all that he's doing. It's now time for our tithes and offering and our gifts. Again, I want to encourage everybody online to continue to uh, email in your prayer requests and your praises uh, um, and, and leave messages, text me, whatever it needs to be done. I enjoy Monday morning because I answer those. So anyone in person, if you want to uh, email me or text me, you're welcome to um, at any time and online anytime. <clears throat> And then I try to respond to them every day. But I am grateful for all that are uh, with us and are worshiping with us in person and also um, online as we worship today uh, together to serve the Lord. Our offering, as we know, we have a plate here and one in the back, and we have a white box on the wall right by the rear door. Um, when you leave, you're welcome to place your offerings in there. Online, you're welcome to mail them in or um, just mark giving on the envelope, and they'll be placed here, not opened, and they'll be given to the treasurer. Also, you can give online, and we've had many give online uh, through our website. As soon as you go to the home page on the right-hand corner, it says online giving. Um, so you, many ways to give your tithes and offerings as we move forward. I do want to recognize one of the gifts that we have received this week. We were blessed a couple years ago to, in one of our revival meetings to have the uh, Gospel Quartet Damascus Road um, come from First Damascus Baptist in uh, Damascus, Maryland. Um, Chuck and Linda and Gary, and they came and they worshiped with us and led us with their quartet. Um, we, I, I know that we have, were blessed, and I know we enjoyed that. Um, they have since retired, and I, when I was away and we went to uh, Fenwick Baptist, where Randy goes, 
Chuck and his wife go there also as they go back and forth, and they were sitting behind us. After church, he came to me, and he pulled me aside, and he said the Lord just spoke to his heart, and they wanted to donate all of their sound equipment to you and I here at Barnesville Baptist Church um, to continue on to use with our online services and to use for outside um, and many things. So this past week, they came by to drop that off. I want to give you a little idea of what God blessed us with. We, we received three more wireless mics, very good quality wireless mics. If you will notice, there's one here for the deacons where the cord's gone now. There's one here for Ed when he does his prayer where that cord is gone now. And there's one here that's marked Gary right here. So, Gary, I guess every time I see it, you got to sing. It's right there. It's, I didn't put that on there. The Lord did. So I got Gary right here uh, the, the, the place for you. We also got speakers. Uh, we also have... Oh, we have another one that we can put another name on, too. Um, but God bless us. These mics are, are, are not, um, they're very expensive, and they, they work so much better because you can move around, and, and you don't have to worry about the cable. They also gave us amps. They gave us a, um, a soundboard, um, many cables, beautiful speakers to go outside and, or in, um, things that we're going to use to enhance the worship. And, and very simply, he said, all he felt was the Lord said, pass it on. Pass it on. So again, we thank, we're thankful for God. Um, I know Chuck will be the first one to say, don't recognize me. Recognize what God has done. God blessed them with that sound equipment, and they minister many churches. And that equipment, even though they retired, the equipment's moving on and will continue to minister. So God, um, God always provides, and we want to say thank you uh, to Damascus Roads for giving us the opportunity to enhance our worship. Um, as we move forward. So as we get our hearts prepared for offering and giving, um, we'll ask Jan to lead us in worship through song.
was beautiful. Thank you, Jan. That was lovely. Beautiful. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, what a glorious day you've given us. A beautiful fall day. We thank you for the many blessings in our homes and our family. We thank you for this good little church. We thank you for everybody who's here and those that are watching. We thank you for Pastor Danny and Cindy. We thank you for all the good and perfect gifts that you've given us. Now, we give back to you a portion of everything you've given us in our tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please rise for our doxology. Good morning, everybody out there and all boys and girls. Let's see what Miss Ann has to bring us this morning for Children's Church. Good morning, boys and girls. This is Miss Ann. I hope you're doing well today. I have a children's story for you today. Do you know what this is? That's right. It's Play-Doh. What do you use it for? Is it good to just leave it out? What would happen if I just left it here and put it on the table? Could I come back to it later and still play with it very easily? How about if I do this? Hey, now I could play catch. What about this? I made it into a little bowl. Oh, how about this? Oh, it's flat like pizza dough. This is fun. I've got a question for you. Did this clay do anything to talk me into using it? Did it do anything to tell me how to shape it? You know, I could have just left the clay in the can all sealed up. Do you know, do you think that's a good idea? You know, even in a sealed up container, this clay would have eventually dried up. Then it wouldn't have been any good to anyone. You know, we could say that by grace, I saved this clay, not because of anything it did. It is my gift to it. But I didn't take it out just to let it sit. I took it out or saved it from being wasted to make it useful. We could say that this clay was transformed from being useless to being useful. Transformed is a fancy word for changed. This is just Play-Doh, I know, but real potters do this all the time with real clay to make useful things for others to enjoy. You know, real clay is just fancy mud, but potters can take that mud and shape it like I did with this and bake it and make beautiful pottery all from fancy mud. You and I and all people are a lot like this clay. The Bible says that the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living thing. In other words, we're fancy mud too. God takes us and saves us from wasting our lives and changes us into something useful. Not because of anything we did, but because he loves us and cares about us. And just as I kind of knew ahead of time what I wanted to do with this clay, or a potter knows what he wants to do with the fancy mud, God has ideas too about what job he wants us to do for him. When we say yes to his plans for us, 
We make him happy, and we are happy too, because we are doing what we were made to do. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for creating us. Thank you for transforming or changing us into something that is useful. Help us to follow you and draw close to you so that we can learn what you would have us do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you. Bye. Amen. What a great word today. As we prepare our hearts again for the worship and for the what the Lord has for us in his word today, I would like for you to join me again as Nita leads us. <clears throat> and Father, we adore thee.
Father, how we love you. How we adore you. How we praise you this day for the opportunity to come and to worship you. Father, I'm grateful for every person that's here today. I'm grateful for every person that's joining us online. I pray that we will be all in one accord, that our minds and our hearts and our souls will be focused on you and your goodness and your mercy, and our thanksgiving will be poured out upon your throne. Lord, be with us. Guide us. Holy Spirit, direct your thoughts. Use mine. May my words be yours. May this day be honoring and glorifying and uplifting to you, Jesus. At the end of this day, I pray you will be pleased with us as we come to worship you. We ask this and seek this out. In the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. As we continue to look at God's word today about being in Christ, as believers in Jesus, I want us to be encouraged once again, uh, uh, once again and encouraging each other to remind us that we are everything in Christ, but we're nothing without him. We must have the Lord in our heart to be all that God wants us to be. I will remind us how truly we are made complete because as believers, we are in Christ. As we just saw, we are complete in Christ. Everything that we are is because of Jesus Christ. We can see and we can read his word and honestly see how blessed we are because of Jesus Christ. How he has molded us and made us to be the people God wants us to be. Never ceases to amaze me with the children's story. A lot of times I don't share the whole message with whoever's preparing that. But God always touches their heart. And what a great example that Ann led, the Lord laid on Ann's heart about being molded as, a, as the clay, as the mud, fancy mud that we are. Molded into what God wants us to be because we are in Christ. One of the first passages that I would like for us to look at today is in Ephesians 2.6. Ephesians 2.6. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We are raised up to be with Christ in Christ in the heavenly realms. God's word tells us that not only are we lifted up in heaven because of Christ, but you and I are delivered <clears throat> from our sins. We're delivered from hell itself because of Jesus Christ. Because the gift on the cross of our Savior. As believers in Jesus, as ones that call on the name of above all names for salvation, we are free from hell's grip. We are free from sin. We're free from the penalty. We're free from the shame, from the guilt, from the memories. Because we are in Christ Jesus. Colossians 1 
13. For he, God, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. He has delivered us. He's rescued us from the dominion of darkness. He has rescued us from hell. He has rescued us from chain, from, from penalties, from brokenness. And he's placed us in the heavenly realms in the kingdom of the Father because of the Son he loves, Jesus Christ. If that doesn't humble us, I'm scared to say what will. If that doesn't allow us to understand the power and the love and the mercy and the depths the Father will go. The Lord Jesus, how he reaches out to us over and over and over again. And how far he'll actually go to get you to understand, for us to understand the grace, the mercy, the love that he wants to bestow upon us. How can we ever fear evil? How can we ever feel fear anything that has to do with the world itself sincerely, knowing that we are 100% in Christ Jesus? For he alone has rescued us. For he alone has delivered us. For he alone is the light that shines in the darkness. For he alone is the one that will put faith in our heart. The Holy Spirit dwells within us as believers in Jesus Christ. And he encourages us. He convicts us. He allows us to be revealed the word to our hearts so it becomes alive. He allows us to do the things that are impossible. One of the things we talked about in Sunday school class today, both in adult class and downstairs. I don't know why they don't call us adults downstairs, but there's adults and then us. So um, we're us. But one of the things that I really loved about today's lesson was it was reality. It was on forgiveness. And not on the forgiveness, well, it was, but not only on the forgiveness we received from Jesus Christ. Today's lesson was focused on the forgiveness we are to give everyone else because we have been forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus forgave us of our sins. And as believers in him, we have all heavenly realms, all spiritual blessings, all authority in the name of Jesus Christ to go out and to share the gospel, to share the hope, to put faith in our action, to put joy in our hearts, to keep us from being depressed and down, looking down on who we are in the situation we're in. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him, Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, and according with the riches of God's grace. The forgiveness was given to us freely, and we are to freely give that away. One of the discussions we had in class today was, yes, it's easy to forgive. It really is. It's easy. It rolls right off the tongue as a believer in Jesus Christ. As the Holy Spirit dwells within our hearts, it's easy when we're wrong to say, I forgive you. The hard part's when we say, Lord, let me forget. Because we can forgive, and a moment later, later, the Satan floods us with all the memories, floods us and reminds us of the wrongs, reminds us of the hurt, reminds us of, of how we were done wrong, and all of a sudden that forgiveness comes to bitterness. Amen? And the Lord says what? You are to forgive, forget, and leave it to me. I will do the rest. I will make it whole. I used to think that meant that God said, what would go along with that is the vengeance is mine. Well, that's what the Lord says. Now that I'm a little older and a little slower and can think a little bit slower, I believe the Lord wants us not only to remember to forgive and to forget, but the Lord's really not looking for vengeance. He's looking for healing. He's looking for restitution, for the relationship to be restored to, made, to be made whole once again. See, you and I in our sinful nation, we want to get even and we want to up it up one level. Amen? The Lord says, no, why don't we seek out healing? True forgiveness. 
true completeness in him. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, God made him who had no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us, so that in him, Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. You want to be in Christ? You want to live a life that's pleasing to him? You want to live a life that's pleasing for yourself? Where you like yourself? Where you get up in the morning and you actually like who you are? You get up in the morning and you enjoy the fact that you have another day? You get up in the morning and you look for another opportunity to share that love? To share that goodness? To maybe do it a little better today than we did yesterday? It starts by being in Christ and Christ being the center of your life. By Christ being the first thought of your day, the last thought of your night, being grateful. Because he was made sin for us so that we could be um, the righteousness of God. So we could approach the throne of God itself with confidence, knowing he is our Savior and Lord, knowing God hears us as his children, as he sees us through his son's blood. John 1, 12. Yet to all who did receive him, Jesus, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Part of being in Christ is knowing you're part of the family of God, adopted into the family of God, co-heirs with the son himself, Jesus Christ. Children of God. Loved by the Father. And then God the Father gave us the heavenly realms because we are seated in the Savior himself, Jesus. Because we're believers. Not because of anything else we've done. Not because we deserve it. Not because of merit. Not because of wealth. Not because of names. Not because what family you come from, what church you come from, or where you work. It's simply because of the grace and the mercy of the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ that we come to be children of God, adopted into the family of God, co-heirs of Jesus Christ, all authority given to us through the Savior, Jesus Christ, to go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 6, once again, and God raises us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Church, we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be grateful for. And once again, I want to remind you, let's not be focused on what we don't have and what we lost or what we're required to do now. Let's be grateful for what we do have. Amen. Let's be grateful for what the Lord has given us. Let's be grateful that even today, this very day, as we met this morning, not one single member, not one single visitor, not one single attender of Barnesville Baptist Church has the virus and has not had the virus from day one because of the grace and the mercy and the love of Jesus Christ. And yes, we're respecting each other. And yes, we are doing everything we can to be smart as we go through this pandemic. We're wearing our, our mask. We're washing our hands. We're cleansing um, our, our, our uh, prayer, our souls. And we're, we're lifting each other up in prayer. And we're respecting each other's opinion and health by doing the things that uh, are just right by family. But most importantly, it's because of the faith we have in Jesus Christ. It's because of the love. It's because of the promise from Jesus to provide for us even now in 2020. To continue to provide for us. Jesus has given us life so that we can be delivered. And so that we can share that love. So we can forgive and forget. So that we can be the example. So that we can be the light in the darkness so that we can call on the authority of the name above all names, Jesus Christ. And great and mighty things will be accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in the name of Barnesville Baptist Church, not in the name of Pastor Danny, in the name of Jesus Christ, great and mighty things will be accomplished. Because he is Lord. He is Savior. He is God. And what does God ask? What does the Lord Jesus ask in return? That we love him with what? All of our heart, soul, and mind that we will trust him and obey, 
that will be the people that God wants us to be. Doesn't mean we're not going to have a bad day. Every one of us have bad days. Every day, every one of us wake up sometimes and we have aches we didn't know there was places at before. Or, or we've had a bad day and, and uh, our, our guard is let down. We're a little depressed or we're just anxious about things. The Lord knew all that when he called you. And he said, what? Just come and I will do the rest. Just believe and trust and I will do the rest. Just be the person you, I'm asking you to be, which is what? Give me your heart, soul, and mind. And I will do the rest. I will provide. To be focused on making Jesus the center of our lives. Whatever is at the center of your life has the greatest influence in your decisions, your attitude, and actions. Let me say that again. Whatever is at the center, whatever the most important thing to you in life is, that will influence every decision you make. It will influence every attitude you have. It will influence every action you take because it will rule your life. Whatever is the main focus of your heart, your mind will follow. Let me say that again. Whatever your main focus, whatever the center, most important thing in your life is, your mind and your soul will follow. So what are some of these things that we all follow or have followed at times in our lives? What are some good examples of things besides Jesus that are the center of our life? Number one is money. Number two, relationships. How about pride? How about pornography? How about addictions? Possessions? How many things we can own? How about self? How about family? How about family's names? How about hobbies? How about work? How about your position at the church? Your position at the city? Your position in the town itself? How about a reputation? All these things are things that we have all dealt with, every one of us. And at some point in our life, something on that list was, and probably maybe sometimes still is, your main focus in your life. Let me share something with you. You will not find peace until Jesus is the center of your life. You will not find rest in your soul until Jesus is the center of your life. You will not be completely at peace and rest. And what does that mean? No matter what comes your way, you will face it with the courage and the confidence that Jesus gives you, but only if he is the center of your life. If he's the focus, the main thing. Come on, church, there's a lot of room in there. Doesn't mean you, you, you don't love your family. Some of these things I said are very important. It doesn't mean there's not room in your heart for these things. What it means is if your center, your main focus, your number one goal is to please God, Man, everything else would just be flores, flores, and just grow in mighty ways. Jesus has to be the focus, the center, the main thing. Many years ago, I was with a couple that tried for many years to have a child. She finally was able to conceive and had a child. And I'll never forget going in the hospital and visiting with them. They handed me the child, and they were so excited and so proud. And just for those of us that had that, excuse me, that have children, we understand that moment. My favorite moment was after they cleaned them up, to be honest with you. When they first handed me my son and child, I'm like, yeah, that's great. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Hose her down, will you? <laughs> Now, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, okay. Do you want to cut the cord? No, ma'am, I'm about to pass out. I'm not, you're going to cut my cord here in a minute. But all kidding aside, when that thing comes back all bundled up and pretty and clean and smelling nice, and wow, I'll never forget. That husband and wife looked at me and said, Pastor, right now, this very second, we want to give her back. To Jesus. We want to pray and ask the Lord and the Holy Spirit to allow us to be the parents that we need to be so that she can be who she needs to be. Isn't that beautiful? I never forgot that. I, I'm going to tell you, I didn't do that. 
I've prayed many a time for my children. Don't get me wrong. The point I'm trying to make is this. It doesn't matter when you start. Maybe there's many things that are not that are crowding your heart today. It's not too late. The Lord still has given you today. The Lord says, make me the center of your heart now, right now. And I will do the rest. Mm. Only a life that's totally focused on Jesus and pleasing Jesus will be a life that's affected in sharing the gospel, sharing the good word, sharing the joy in every way. As we worship here today, and I want to give a shout out to everyone online. As of today, we're in three, two, two nursing homes, one assistant living and one rehab center reaching out to many people, not only to many of our members who are not able to come because of the virus, and to many visitors. I say that not boasting in the name of Barnesville Baptist Church. There's no way this little church on the hill could ever figure that out. I say that this, we know that all things are possible. And I am proud to be your shepherd, your pastor, because I know for a fact that the overall feeling, truth, and promise, and commitment of this church body is that we know all things are possible with Jesus Christ. Notice I didn't say we were perfect, because we're not. But we did get one thing right, amen? We know that all things are possible with Jesus Christ. I was reading Colossians this week as I studied. You know, Colossians shows uh, talks about the... Supremacy of Jesus Christ and who he is. It's a beautiful book in the Bible. If you ever want to know a little bit more better picture of the power, the supremacy, the authority of Jesus, read the book of Colossians. And I encourage you to read it a couple of times straight through. I actually encourage you to get some pen and paper and write down words you hear over and over again. Write down the theme that you hear over and over again. Write down what the Holy Spirit is sharing and lighting to you and, and revealing to you as you read God's word. The one verse that stands out for me is Colossians 1, 27. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You want some hope? You want some joy? You want your life to be meaningful? It starts by being in Christ, by being a child of God, by being Jesus, allowing Jesus to be the center focus of your life. Hmm. The only hope and strength we have is through the Holy Spirit who dwells within us as believers. In other words, the only hope that we have to receive salvation, freedom from our sins and past, to be set free from the burden of our past, the shame, the, the reminders that Satan keeps reminding us, the memories that haunt us at night. You can be freed from all that by simply calling on the name above all names, Jesus Christ, confessing your sins to him, asking him to forgive you to come into your life. The Holy Spirit will dwell within you, acknowledging that Jesus is the Son of God, raised from the dead from the Father. And Jesus says, you shall be set free. Yes, free indeed. To live a life of hope, peace, and joy. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We've, we've read this a many a time. Therefore, if anyone is in Jesus or in Christ, the new creation has come. You're a new being. The old is gone. The new is here. So next time you're reminded of your past, the next time someone reminds you of your past, very kindly, listen, church, don't get no pride into this. Very kindly, very gratefully, very th with a thankful heart. Say, yeah, that's right. That's exactly who I was. But let me share with you who I am today because of Jesus Christ. Boy, there's a big difference. Amen. Another passage I believe is very important is Romans 6, 11. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God. Why? In Christ Jesus. 
Come on, let's read it again. Is it up there? Yeah, let's read it again. In the same way, count yourself dead. Simply, your sins are dead. They're gone. That old me is gone. It's dead. But I am alive now in God because of his son, Jesus Christ. There's a big difference there. Amen. Jesus is your strength. He is our guide. He is our hope. He is our future. He's the reason we survive. He's the reason that we meet today in safety, respecting each other, loving each other, accepting each other. Why? Because we are in Jesus Christ as believers. If we allow Jesus to be the center of our lives, the center of our faith, you will live a life that's blessed. Not trouble-free, not without tribulation, not without heartache, not without trials. Jesus said you will be blessed and you will be more than conquerors in every situation. How about John 15, 5? Jesus says, remind you, you must remain in me. I am the vine, Jesus says, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Come on, church. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I was thinking about this sermon this morning when Brother Joe and I were sharing this little fellowship. Joe was telling me how he was doing trees yesterday and how he knew it this morning that he was doing trees yesterday. And he was sharing with me about sharing the wood, cutting up the logs to produce fire, heat, whatever we might need. Stacking it and moving it and sharing it. But then he also made a very wise comment that he didn't even realize. Then he said, I took them old branches and we threw them in our trailer and I threw them away. They were useless. Why? Because they weren't connected anymore. They weren't part of the tree. They were to just, the comment was made, let's just stack it up. And that would have been me because I'm like, no, we can get that tomorrow. Let's stack that stuff up over here. Actually, leave it where it is. Let nature take care of it. That's what God meant for it, Joe. Leave it there. But the point I'm trying to make is this. If it's not connected, it's useless. Those branches were dead and gone. Listen to me. Be dead in your sin and alive in Jesus Christ. Wow. Accept it. And remember the fact, without Jesus being the focus of your life, without Jesus being the focus of this church family, without Jesus being the focus of the Southern Baptist Convention or anybody else you want to mention, if they ever lose sight and think they're doing it on their own, they will fail. The only way that we will ever be accept, uh, blessed and used is by reminding ourselves that without Jesus, we can do nothing. And without Jesus being the center of our life, we can do nothing. It's a great reminder for everybody that's on the 150th committee, by the way. Because we're not going to meet and talk about how proud we are that we've been in the same location, the same building, the same grounds, consistently opening, serving the Lord for 150 years. Because if we boast on that, guess what? We won't see 151. You know what we're going to boast on? God has sustained us. God has blessed us. God has used us and will continue to use us if we remind ourselves, apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Romans 8, 37. Know in all these things, remember anything you do that comes your way in Jesus Christ, when you're in Christ, you will be not just conquerors. Jesus' word says you'll be more, more, than conquerors. Why? Through him, Jesus, who loves you. 
How about 1 Corinthians 15, 55? Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Simple as that. One of the greatest fears everyone has in this world is death. And Jesus says there's no sting in death when you're in me, in Christ, when you're a believer of Jesus Christ. Because death opens the door for victory, amen, for heaven itself. Thank you all for praying for my father. You know, they had an outbreak in his uh, assistant living and um, with one person, and they tested everyone, every resident and every employee. I want to share with you that every resident and every employee came back negative. So they allowed him out of his room. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and he's, you still can't visit him, but at least he ain't stuck in the room. They're opening up the dining room again. They're allowing him to go visit and share with each other. I use my father for a lot of examples, sometimes good, sometimes bad. That's because I can, because he ain't here. But I will say this, and I know he meant it from the bottom of his heart. When I was speaking with the director, and she told me that he came back negative, I said, well, that's great. She says, you know, I've heard a lot of responses in my life. And she actually had a tear. Choking up a little. She said, but your father got me today. I said, well, okay, I've heard that many times. What can I say? What did he do? She said he just sat there, looked up, said, well, I was hoping to see Jesus today. Let me say something. I know my father. That was not out of depression. That's his heart. But it also touched the lady. And she said, all I could say was, maybe not today, maybe tomorrow, Pop. And she walked out. I say that because there's no sting in death. It's the joy of knowing you're in heaven bound. Wow. So remember, in Christ, you are more than conquerors. In Christ, you have salvation. In Christ, you have authority to approach the throne with confidence. In Christ, you have all your biggest fears are taken away. In Christ, he has to be the center of your life in order for you to have the life that God wants you to have. And we also learned four important things this week. From Colossians 1.13, we read, we are delivered from all dark powers, from all evil. We are delivered by Jesus Christ, by in Christ. Ephesians 2, 6, we learned, we are elevated to the heavenly places. Why? We're seated with Jesus Christ in Christ. In Ephesians 1, 7, we learned that we are forgiven from all of our sin because Jesus in Christ became sin and we become the righteousness of God because of him. In Romans 8, 37, we find because we're in Christ, we are more than conquerors for any situation that comes our way. We have a lot more to look at over the next two weeks. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to find out even more of the joy of being in Christ. We have a lot to be thankful for, church. Yes, we have a lot of struggles. And yes, this world in 2020 is a a year that every one of us would love to just write off. But I will tell you this right now. The eight people that have accepted Jesus so far from this small little church and from the online services would not say that to you today. I promise you they're saying I'm grateful for 2020 because I know Jesus Christ personally because of my trials. I think the 100 people that we feed every single week, 50 to 100 people, would say I'm thankful that this church is in Christ Jesus. I think that the the people that we reach out with help in every different way in our prayer lives and our calls and our cards and our meals and things that we do every single day of the week as a church body, I don't think they would say they're unthankful for 2020. I think they would say I've learned a lot about my little church in 2020. So let's stop thinking and focusing on what we don't have. Church, let's focus and be grateful for what we do have. Jesus Christ, and the fact that we know we can do all things, but we can accomplish nothing if he, if he is not the head, if he is not the center point 
if he's not the main focus. I thank you, and I praise you. I pray if anyone here doesn't know where they stand with Jesus, that you won't leave here today without seeing me. I pray if anybody online, call 410-459-3993 is my cell number. Don't hesitate to call. Email me, Pastor Danny at live, L-I-V-E dot com. Uh, call the church, 301-407-0500. Show up, whatever it takes. Call me because I ain't next door for right yet. So uh, but the most important thing is know where you stand with Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you and I praise his name. I want to thank everybody who's been praying for us in the house and the situation with the mold. Um, I will let you know as of today and thank the committee and Luke and Billy. And, and uh, we actually called in an expert with mold to come in and treat the house. Um, it is mold free as of today. It stinks, <laughs> and you can't breathe over there. Now it's for a different reason. Now it's because of the chemicals. Um, so we're still not going to be home for a couple of days because we need to air, get the get the chemical smell out. But they uh, brought in machines and sucked all the air out, purified it, cleaned it. They wiped down every single surface downstairs. The uh, professional people did. And I will have to tell you this, and I'm proud of this, and I'm excited about this. Uh, the gentleman did it, didn't have to touch the one kind of, it was two different kind of molds. He didn't have to, we didn't spend one dime through the professionals on the one kind of mold because our property committee and Billy got every bit of that out. Uh, saved us thousands and thousands of dollars. When he did his trace, he couldn't find any trace of that. Um, so the second mold, we didn't even know it was there um, until they came. So right now it's clean, it's ready, but I wouldn't go over there right now because um, it's pretty pretty rough um, smell. But a couple more days, we'll be home. And uh, as I told the men on Saturday morning prayer breakfast, uh, I appreciate the ones that drive because for five years I've walked. Um, now I understand when you leave something, you say, I'll get it tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, God is good in every way. Amen. We had a great prayer breakfast. Our beast feast last. Our beast feast for the men will be at Roy. Roy's house, I'm just letting Maggie know in case she needs to know. Um, Roy's house, October 17th, 4 p.m. Um, there's plenty of room to spread out down there. You're going to have a smoker. We'll have the wild boar stew. We're going to have uh, venison burgers. We'll have fried fish like we always do. We, uh, Roy's thinking about putting uh, some meat on the smoker and having that going. There's plenty of space to move around. We'll have a bonfire. We can go in Maggie's house and use the bathrooms and route through the kitchen and get whatever we need there. Um, we just have a great time. So that's October 17th, 4 p.m., Plenty of social distancing space, everything else, um, just so you know. So we give the Lord the praise for that. Anything else? 150th committee, you know who you are if you will go immediately downstairs in the fellowship hall so we can start our meeting um, uh, quickly so we won't hold you as long as we, as, at least as we can, okay? So if you're on the 150th committee, please make your way after we are dismissed down in the fellowship hall. Thank you. God bless you. See you Wednesday. Prayer meeting here or online. Um, and we'll just have a great day in the Lord. Who's Lee, will you? Would you pray with me as we dismiss? Thank you, Lord, for this hour. Uh, it's always good to hear from your word and, and learn the truths that you have for us. Thank you for letting us know who we are in you so that we can be all that you want us to be. Uh, as we go out, uh, bless each family, bless each person so that we can share that love that, that we've learned about today with everyone we come across. We thank you for everything that you, that you are to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Great week.